Hi, welcome to the channel. Tonight we're going to go up to a mountain in South Wales, one of the lowest mountains in the Bracken Beacons in terms of how far south it is. It's Kefen Rustra, it's a bit of an outlier, it's beneath uh, Penivan and Corn Dee. Um, it's going to be quite windy on top. Um, it's also quite rainy at the moment. They give it drying up for a few hours and then coming back raining heavy about 2 a.m. So I've got a different tent to test. I'm in my two-man little tent tonight, so I'm hoping it's not going to be too rough up there because obviously I've never tested it before, so I don't know if it's going to uh, withstand it. Um, I don't have my external road marks tonight because uh, they've had to go back because they are broken and they just completely failed on me. So I'm going to use a mic from this camera and I bought a couple of cheap wireless mics which I'll use with whatever camera, but obviously I don't want to get that up when it's raining. So if the audio is a bit bad, then <laughs> that's the reason for that. But um, yeah, it's a bit of a different one tonight because I know in most of my videos where I'm doing a bit of wild camping, it's always like an absolutely glorious evening here in South Wales. Tonight, it's absolutely not. It's been raining all day. Um, there's quite a lot of wind about. I mean, a nice little shower spot here, so I thought I'd have a go at doing a bit of an audio recording. Um, I don't know how the sound's gonna come out because this is not <laughs> not a great mic on this camera at all, it's only a cheap camera. Um, but yeah, we're gonna try and head up. If we don't make it in time to get to the mountain top, there's lots of craggy stuff marked on the US maps, so we'll just find somewhere to pitch up that's quite nice. And um, yeah, we'll get comfy in what should be a nice big spacious tent because it's 2.75 kilos on my back at the moment. Um, but the trade-off is that it should be nice and spacious when I get there. So I'm gonna crack on and get up to the top of this hilly part and just see how the weather's like, um, see how we're doing for time and see if we are gonna make it to the, to the summit or not. If not, I'm sure there's loads of places up here where it would be good to pitch a tent. And it'd be a good test for the tent because obviously quite a lot of rain forecast overnight and a fair bit of wind higher up looking at 40 miles an hour plus up to maybe 48 miles an hour gusts um so <laughs> i'm not entirely confident with the little tent in those kind of conditions so that's why i've come here tonight it's a little bit lower and um, i think there's more chance of finding a sheltered spot if i don't feel comfortable pitching sort of out in the open and stuff so yeah i'm going to stop rambling on crack on with a walk and we'll see how far we get before we got to pitch up Right, it is about 10 minutes past 10, about 3.2 miles to get here, 1,100 feet of ascent. Didn't get here till it was pretty dark. Um, the rain was starting to come in. As you can hear, it's quite windy as well. So I got the tent pitched as quick as I could. It's not an easy tent to pitch. It's a two-man tent, and I think it'd be a bit easier with two, with two people. Because the poles go through sleeves the length of the tent, it's quite hard to get them into the end. So you've got to keep going to the end to try and get it in and get back to the other side. Then the other one sort of comes out a little bit. And the one pole is not in the correct um, pole point. So it's not actually um, pitched quite properly, but it's, it's the end that's not into the wind. And in the end, I just I completely gave up. My hands were really wet, so the, the aluminium pole kept slipping out of them. And I just could not get enough tension on it to actually get into the correct pole hoop. So it's not a problem, it's not, it's not going to go anywhere, but um, yeah, a bit frustrated by that and uh, 
I was getting more and more frustrated and the rain got heavier so I thought you know what just give up and get in the tent you can hear it's blowing quite a lot outside I'm pitched just below the trig point so about probably about seven uh, 617 meters the trig point 619 um, there's a tiny lip of grass about that just give me a little bit of protection from the wind um, but not much so I've pitched with the back into the wind it's all guyed out nicely I pitched the wrong way round um, second time I pitched this tent obviously this time in the dark um, and the doors are this end so open them up and the wind is coming into the tent Whereas if I just, it is a free time until I could have switched it around if I could have been bothered. But by this point, I was like, you know what? <laughs> let's just let's just get in the tent, get out of the rain and get sorted out. So yeah, it's not pitched absolutely perfectly, but it's it's feeling pretty solid. I've got no concerns currently with the way it's moving. Um, it feels nice and solid. It's, it's guyed out well. Um, there was a few rocks in the ground, but luckily I was able to, to avoid those and get the pegs in nicely. So I'm just using the standard pegs that came with the tent as well. Um, so no, no fancy ones. I have got some decent titanium stakes on me that have, that can be double pegged down if if I really get concerned. But they're not forecasted much above 30 miles an hour uh, at wind tonight, and they give again a little bit worse in the next hour or two, and then gradually tailing off towards morning. But it's not going to get down below, I think, sort of 15 to 20 um, at any point in the morning. Um, but they do give the weather getting nicer in the morning. So expecting a bit of heavy rain later on. Um, but hopefully tomorrow morning we'll be able to get out and do a bit of filming around the tent as well because uh, hopefully it'll be nice and dry uh, and the views will, will will hopefully be there as well. So I've been to this mountain uh, once before at the end of uh, lockdown where you're allowed to sort of walk places but not travel too far. Um, I walked this mountain from home about 25 miles. Um, really good walk actually. Um, so I have been here before but... Uh, <laughs> A nice easy three miles tonight. This is obviously 2.75 kilograms in weight to get up here. But when you're wet and you want to get changed and you want to sort of sort yourself out and have room for wet gear and, and you sort of sleeping bag and stuff, this is where a tent of this size does make sense. You know, it's got so much headroom in here. Um, no matter where I sit, it's got really good headroom all the way around. There's plenty of width as well. So it feels really nice to be in here now. And obviously it's a pitch all in one. So although I had a little bit of problems pitching it, um, the inner was obviously gonna be protected all the time because it was already up and uh, inside the outer. So there's no there's no moisture ingress at all. Um, and it was really good to get in here, get my stuff in here and uh, and sort of get a little bit sorted out before, <laughs> before I started filming. Um, so I've got wet socks, so I'm actually need to change. A bit of a damp top, which I'll change as well. It's not particularly cold. I'm just sat in my, in my boxes and wet socks at the moment in this, this sort of damp, damp T-shirt. Um, my trousers are pretty wet. My waterproof was pretty wet, but that's largely from just sweat because that's the problem with waterproofs in summer. Even it's, a, it's only a very lightweight rab one. It's got the underarm opens and stuff, but my sort of forearms are really sweaty. And apparently you, you get rid of more heat um, from your forearms than any of the body any of the body parts so that's why sort of gilets are quite good with your arms exposed you can, you can get rid of a lot of heat from them <laughs> just you know a little thing i read once um so yeah i have bought a few luxuries tonight i bought a book so i'm going to do a bit of reading because it's quite a big book and i logged it all the way up here so i'm, I'm going to have to get some reading done um i have got earplugs if it is too noisy to sleep um and we'll see if there's any kind of ghosts or anything up here because just over that way, couldn't see it tonight because it's just the visibility is <laughs> it's not good up here at all with the mist and the and the fog and the rain. Um, but there's a memorial cross from a, from a bomber that crashed during World War II on the way back from a sortie. Um, didn't quite realise where they are, and, and this is the the sort of southernmost edge of Bracken Beacon. So this was the first mountain they came to and, and crashed into it. So yeah. I'm not sure if I should have mentioned it because now I'm thinking in my own head that's a bit spooky <laughs> and it's not like one of those evenings where um, a lot of the camps have done recently it's just been absolutely glorious weather and really warm and beautiful views for miles and, and hasn't really got dark at all um, not, in, not in a true sense because it's just, it's just been so so light and so summery and obviously been the longest days as well so tonight it feels a bit different it was quite dark on the walk up and um, 
and it's quite dark now and the, the, the sound of the wind is, is quite different on a on a rainy night you can hear a little bit of rain hitting the tent now um so yeah it should be a decent test for it um yeah i'm i'm pretty confident you know in little we trust and my walking trousers tonight are also Crivet, the same makers as Tent, a little brand. Um, I've had those for probably a couple of years now, and they've been really, really good, actually. Uh, they compare really favorable to my Montane Terra pants, so really pleased with those. So I do, I do trust little gear. So I am going to um, get out my wet stuff, get on some nice dry clothes, get my airbed out, get my sleeping mat done, get the pillow done, and sort of get ready to, to chill out a bit. So I might come back another a bit of a chat if I if I feel like it but um don't necessarily need to now <laughs> it's quite late um I have got work tomorrow as well so I'm conscious I've got <laughs> quite a lengthy walk back to the car and drive home and get ready for work as well um but I'm hoping it'll be a very different morning with some views and some bits and pieces so yeah it was um it was an enjoyable walk up very very different to the ones I've done recently because of the weather um but I felt quite good. I've been trying to do a little bit more walking recently, try and get my fitness back after having the dreaded uh, plague that everyone's been catching over the last couple of years. I haven't felt quite right since um, physically. I felt very lethargic all the time. But when I've been walking the baby, I've been taking the, uh, the backpack carrying. She's just over one now, so she's, she's over eight, eight, eight and a half kilos in weight. And the backpack carrier is probably another two, two and a half kilos as well. So taking that weight around just doing the walks is I think it's been helpful so that pack actually felt really good tonight um it's more it's comfier than the the back pack carrier I've got so I felt actually felt quite good in the walk um a little bit out of breath on the way up but you know not not too bad considering it was 1100 feet of descent um no I, I felt I felt quite good tonight I'm going to try and get back into shape I'm going to try and lose some weight as well I'm the heaviest I've been for a good few years now so <laughs> I'm over 40 so it's a constant battle to try and stay in any kind of shape especially when you're working full time but no I'm going to try and eat a bit healthier get a bit more back in shape I've got a bit of a knackered knee as well so I, every every few pounds you're losing weight takes a load of pressure off the knee as well so I'll definitely try and do that so yeah I've really enjoyed it tonight and it's, it's been quite good to to have a bit of bad weather and actually look forward to getting into the tent as opposed to sort of it being such nice weather, the tent kind of not not as much as a, as a necessity as it is tonight. Whereas tonight, especially that last bit, and I couldn't get that final pole properly sorted out, and it just started raining quite heavy. I was like, right, let's just get everything in the tent and get get settled in. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I'm in a big tent tonight to be able to do that quite comfortably. You wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't. That's the one thing with the really compact tents and the ones with really lack of space in it. Is how do you how do you get in if you're absolutely soaking wet and try and maintain a dry inner space that you feel comfortable in? At least in here, I can chuck all my wet stuff to one end and one side and, and, and be completely dry and comfortable on the other. But, yeah, that's enough rambling for now. I will, um, yeah, I'll crack on and get comfy. <laughs> so, the weather's getting worse. The wind's picking up. It's raining pretty heavy out there now. The water that was coming through here, it wasn't off my head, it was actually coming through the vent, which I hadn't thought about when I pitched it, I just left it kind of half open. So I made the mistake of getting completely undressed, drying myself off and then realizing I had to get back out of the tent to close the vent. But since I've closed the vent, there's no more water coming through there. So yeah, there's a little bit of water ingress from me being stupid and not checking the vent when I, when I pitched it. Um, but it's gonna be a, a decent test for the tent tonight and for whether I can sleep <laughs> in these kind of conditions. Um, yeah, I'm really glad I'm in the tent now because it's, uh, it's definitely getting a lot worse. I'm nice and cozy. The weather is bad, but it's very mild. So my cheap old sleeping bag feels perfectly warm enough. I've got a sleeping bag liner, which I highly recommend anyone to get it does add an extra bit of warmth to any sleeping bag because you can get it really close to your skin so it traps the air really nicely but also just keeps the inside of your sleeping bags clean and you can just wash, wash the liner every now and again and you don't need to worry about washing the sleeping bags as frequently so really highly recommended piece of kit um, anyway 
hopefully there's been some nice footage of the walk up here. Yeah. Nice in a sense they might have captured the kind of greyness, the bleakness, the mist, the fog, the drizzle, the rain, and the kind of atmosphere of walking uh, up to this mountain. And hopefully tomorrow morning will be a nice contrast with views of the central beacons and other stuff. And yeah, hopefully the tent will be fine and I'll wake up <laughs> refreshed and raring to go for tomorrow. So I'm going to call it a night now and I will catch up with you then. Well, good morning. I have not slept particularly well. It's been pretty relentless <laughs> all night with wind and rain. It's 10 to seven now, the weather forecast has kept changing. Um, so they give the rain lingering for a lot longer now. So I might have to stay in the tent for a lot longer until the rain stops so I can get out and <laughs> do some filming and pack away in comfort because uh, it's pretty grim out there, I'd imagine. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's been quite a night. The tent's done really well. And I slept pretty well as well. The sleeping bag's actually uh, not too bad. I, mean, I guess it was quite mild last night anyway, but um, I slept without any clothes on for most of the night. About 4 a.m. I just popped just a hoodie on because my, my T-shirt's still wet. And just some... Uh, some thermal leggings and I was absolutely toasty warm so yeah managed to get a little bit of sleep but I wouldn't say I was uh, refreshed and raring to go so yeah I'll uh, keep an eye on the weather tidy up some stuff try and get reasonably ready and try and uh, get out as soon as there's a break and uh, see if there's any kind of views <laughs> right it's five past nine i'm out of the tent it's still pretty grim up here it's pretty cold um drizzle <laughs> no visibility at all so i'm just going to get packed away and just head back to the car so yeah tent did really well really pleased with it it was a definitely a different camp um to come up here in bad weather to walk up in bad weather with no views um, but I was really hoping to wake up with some nice views because over in that direction where you can't see anything at all is really nice views to, um, to Penavan and Corndi directly south of them here. Um, so I will chuck a couple of photos on that I've taken on the previous trip where you, you could see them. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to get home, I think, and um, just call it a, a day really because unless... I'll, I'll do some more filming if there's any visibility on the way down at any point. Um, but I'm conscious my camera's getting pretty wet now. Um, I'm not particularly warm. <laughs> I'm going to, have to get the tent taken apart and, and down and, and try and stuff it back into a bag, which is a bit of a nightmare. Because it does not fit into the bag particularly well. Um, but yeah, obviously, we'll see what happens on the way down. But if not, huge thanks for watching the video if you've made it this far. Um, do drop a like if you've enjoyed it. And if you're new to the channel and you enjoy seeing me out and about in budget gear, testing it out and um, just generally enjoying some nice camps, then do subscribe. Um, I do normally try and get some nice scenery shots and some nice views and time lapses, but uh, yeah, it was supposed to be much nicer this morning, but the weather's really still closed in. So um, maybe this is one of those mountains I'll revisit in the future because it is, it is a nice place to pitch and I know there are nice views and a good day. So yeah, huge thanks for watching. Do drop a like, do subscribe if you're not already subscribed and uh, I'll be sure to catch you next one. Thank you very much.